Welcome to The Daily Dish with New York Times bestselling author, Leanne Ely. Putting vibrancy back into your everyday life and feeding your heart, mind, body, and soul. Join us every day at 1 p.m. Eastern for Motivational Monday, Tuesday's Tip, Wise Woman's Wednesday, Thirsty Thursday, Food Fight Friday, and of course, Q&A, where no question is off limits, and Soulful Saturday. Here is your host, Leanne Ely and The Daily Dish. Monday and I'm feeling very motivated to wear pink today so I'm all about the pink I've got pink here and pink there pink pink lipstick pink I like pink it's all about the pink anyway welcome come on in we're gonna be talking about motivational Monday and basically some stuff that I've been thinking about I think is gonna help you out there's my girl Amber in the house that's gonna help you out to create kind of a motivational manifesto in your head. Don't we need that? I'm telling you, that's what we need. This is The Daily Dish Show, and this is where we put vibrancy back into your everyday life, heart, mind, body, and soul. There's Jackie, there's Jema, there's Juanita, the, the J's have joined. <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah, this is what we do every single day. Mary Ann knows, so does Lizzie. And they're all popping in. So good to see you all. There's my girl, Jenny. Happy to have Jenny back from her trip. Margo's here. Good to see you, Margo. Anyway, new quote of the week. And boy, do, where do you see what our supplement of the week is? Boy, where do you see it? Who's Who said that? Yolanda's wearing all the, the things, too. She's in pink. Julia, Julie, hello. Carol, nice to see you. Patsy is here. I can see your smile, Patsy. There's my girl, Jo Ann. Very happy to have you all aboard. I love Motivational Monday. You know, Mondays are fresh starts, aren't they? There's my other Julie. We got the Julies in. All of you J people, you need to form a club. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> There's Sharon. Good to see you. Sharon was on fire. Did you see her dancing and shaking her groove thing? I like a little shake shake. Anyway, I'm gonna talk about our dancers in a minute. Yes, it is pink tie-dyed, Mary. Thanks for noticing. Listen, I have just a word for you. Hey there, Beverly, I have a word for you. If you see something cute that looks like, hey, what a cute little outfit, right? There's Jennifer, Sarah in the house, you see? And the model's holding a phone, taking a picture. You're thinking, oh, that's so cute. I have to have that. So I bought it, you know, off of one of those discount places <laughs> with the pants that matched. Well, I put it on and I didn't look like her. No way. Not only did I not look like her, I looked like I was in my pajamas. So I was just like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I mean, I might as well wear pajamas all the time. But it just cracks me up. Listen, you're not gonna look like the model. Hey, <laughs> red alert. <laughs> There's Lucy and, Sus and Susan. Good to see everyone. I'm really glad you're here. Um, our quote of the week, right? You ready for it? Strength and growth can only come through continuous struggle and effort. Thank you, Napoleon Hill. Just pl putting it to you plain. What I love about this, and I, the reason I chose this, there's my girl Amy in the house. You know why I chose this one? or I didn't, but it was in the queue. Can I just say, you know why? Because I think the honest answer to everything that we have going on is yes, we can make it simpler. Yes, we can make it easier, but part of the whole reason we go through this journal <laughs> journey in the first place is to understand what we're about. It's in the struggle that we find out who we are, right? You know this. You know this, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm, I'm tired of people, I'm tired of the marketers peddling to me, and so oh, it's easy, it's effortless, you don't have to do a thing. That's crap, and you know it. We all know it, don't we? Anyway, I saw another Lucy. We have two Lucys in the house. And there's my girl Yvonne, checking in from Whittier, California. That's my hometown, by the way. Did you watch the Super Bowl? My son's commercial was not on. Jeep was there, that's what we know, Jeep was there. But 
Sorry, he got preempted by the boss. This Bruce Springsteen had his big moment. Whatever. Okay. But I will tell you, be watching. My son, for anybody who doesn't know this, my son did a commercial for Jeep. He's driving the Jeep. He is, he is kayaking down the thing, and you'll recognize him because he's one handsome looking boy, very good looking boy. He's got a, I shouldn't say he's a boy, he's almost a man. Well, he is a man. What am I saying? He's almost 30. How does this happen? How do we, how do we, our kids grow up to be that old? But anyway, he's almost 30. So you will see him, and he's fantastic. He, he did, I'm sure he did a fabulous job. It's gonna be great. Um, you're getting a little piece of my window view. It's beautiful outside. It's still chilly. I am going to do this week, I'm going to do a whole tour of my house because I've had a few people ask. I have a few things that I'm doing around here. And yes, he will always be my little boy, you're right. But um, I just wanted to let you know, if you see a kayaking Jeep commercial, the, the young man in it is my son and I'm just a proud mom, and I get to be a proud mom about that. I know he did a great job. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm just popping, ready to see it. A uh, Couple of things that we have going on, you know, this week is the true sprint, the legal sprint is this week, and if you are new to this, if you're sprinting and you're going, hey, I just don't, well, I don't quite get it, savingdinner.com forward slash sprint to get the news, to get it all together. That's what you wanna do. This is the webinar that tells you all about it, okay? It'll just give you the, the lowdown so that you feel confident doing. This is the whole idea of why we do these things, right? That's number one. Number two, this Thursday, <laughs> I'm broaching a topic that is near and dear to my heart. I shouldn't say dear. I should say uh, the truth of, of my life. I have struggled in my life with food addiction since I was a teen. Um, now I'm not going to be, I'm going to be talking about food addiction. I'm not going to be talking about eating disorders and binging, purging, all of that. I'm just going to be talking about the addiction to food and how it holds us back from the life that we want to lead. Because I believe with all of my heart now, I never went into, I tried to binge and it just didn't, I was just like, ew, this is awful. Why would anybody want to do this? You know, burned your throat and all. I tried it. You know, I'm just going to say I tried it. Never did anorexia or any of that, but I know what it's like to eat past the point of no return, and I know what it's like to, it really literally is stuffing your feelings. And I know that a lot of it is born out of stuff that we're dealing with on the inside. And it can become a habit, it can become a perpetual pattern, and it can become something that is just completely out of control. Uh, Jama just said m and yeah, the, the, I will tell the famous m and story too. But anyway, this Thursday, we're gonna get free from that. Um, using some of the techniques that I'm gonna share with you and using some things because I have finally gotten to the place of control in my life, you know, all these years later. And, um, but it's something that is, is always comes bubbling to the top every once in a while where it, it, it's old stuff that, that, you know, lifts its ugly head. If you'd like to come to this, uh, of course it's free. And um, if you can't make it on Thursday night, it's at 7 p.m., just sign up anyway so that you can get a link to this because I believe that there's gonna be something that's really gonna rock your world um, and help you with some techniques, some things that you can do. Um, and, and I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a counselor, I'm not anything, but I am a health coach, I am a nutritionist, and I know the damage having this kind of a mindset does, um, it's very defeating. And I wanna get you past that. So if this is you and you're feeling like this, ah, she's talking to me, please join us at savingdinner.com forward slash freedom. Freedom, right? I don't know about you, but I wanna live free and happy and not addicted to food. You know, alcoholics have choices, right? You know, it's it real easy to abstain. Same, same with methamphetamine addicts. All of these guys, the, the, it's very clear. You have to do, you know, this is a problem, don't do this anymore. Well, for us who have food addiction issues, 
it can be a loaded gun because there is a lot of things there. There's a lot of things there that can really, uh, you know, you might get rid of the Oreos, but something else then comes and takes its place. So we're going to be talking about that. So it's, it's called, yes, it's called Ditching Food Addiction, Living a Vibrant Life, and Creating Freedom from Food. Okay? I hope to see you there. SavingDinner.com forward slash freedom. All right. Um, so this is what we're going to be doing also. Uh, oh, I also wanted to tell you about our supplement of the week. We've changed it. I've got something very, very different for you. Um, what I have is a ton of skincare that I want to see fly out the door. Okay, we've got a lot of it right now. The skincare is, I'm telling you, this trio, there it is, is nourishment for your skin. It is nourishment for your skin. You are never going to go wrong with feeding your skin from the inside, but also feeding it from the outside because there's a lot of chemicals in skincare. And this stuff you could literally eat if you had to, which I don't want you to do. It doesn't taste good. Not that I've eaten it, but you know, it's just, it's, it's not delicious. So I want you, so this, so our, our savingdinner.com forward slash show to see our skin, our um, supplement of the week, which it means you buy that trio. I'm going to give you beauty support for 10 bucks. This is a $49, it's a $50 supplement y'all for 10 bucks dollars okay ten dollars go to savingdinner.com forward slash show to get this deal and yes we will also ship it to you free scream and deal great introduction for you to get our fabulous skincare one other thing that i'm going to say is you know when i was telling everybody how to use this when we got it back when the weather was warmer i was saying two or three drops well now, I'm doing like five or, or six drops. I'm doubling down on the oil simply because of the dryness of having the heat on all the time. You know how it is. Um, hydration obviously really helps, so does sleep. But when you're putting your skincare on, you want it to feel, you want your face to feel emollient, okay? Really important. Savingdinner.com forward slash show. Check it out and also, don't forget, the, I think we're on the last box of these. But these are our mugs. Aren't they adorable? Don't get mad about the results you didn't earn from the work you didn't do. Cosmic 2x4. Um, they're, they're so cute. I mean, everything about them I love. Savingdinner.com forward slash mug. To find out what a mindful mug is, how it can help you in your health journey, and how to get one free. There's three different ways to get them. So check it out. Savingdinner.com forward slash mug. And lastly... I want you to get these. These are flying out the door, you know? They really are, because I, I'll tell you something. Don't you want an environment that supports the life you wanna lead? Or do you just wanna be living in temptation land, <laughs> you know? Just stuck, stuck. Nobody wants that. We need environments that support us. So for me, um, the little quote decks are fabulous because you can just stick this cute little wooden stand, which we give you, with a quote that just hits you upside the head, because we all need that, put it right there on the stand and then stick it right by your computer. Here's mine. Look at it. Part of courage is simple consistency. Consistency is my word of the year. And I need this to remind me that, you know, it's time to get out and go shake my groove thing. Yesterday I did a, uh, it's savingdinner.com forward slash quote, by the way. Uh, yesterday I did uh, the Whitney Houston um, ride and then I did hurt the arms after and I I can barely lift this quote deck my my arms are my arms are a little sad <laughs> you know that feeling like oh don't even do that that hurts um, it hurts in a good way so I like that every once in a while questions are um, on Friday always Q&A support at savingdinner.com for your question question for Leanne on Friday in the support line us the subject line and then you will get your question answered on Friday. Do you like that? I do. So I think I told you everything. The only thing I didn't tell you about were the show notes. Are you getting them? Who gets show notes here and enjoys them? Anna exactly spaghetti worms. Anna understands she lifts weights. I'm telling you it's amazing how little teeny weights when you do things for a minute at a time will just absolutely put your whole arm 
socket on fire. But um, I was happy to do it. Today is, is legs and butt though, so I'm not happy about that. I keep thinking, I'm gonna be on the boat. I'm gonna be in a bathing suit. <laughs> there will be people there. And I wanna take off my cover. So, you know, if my butt's gonna be hanging out, it might as well, might as well get popped up. Helen says she gets those, those uh, show notes. Okay, so saving dinner, just go to savingdinner.com and you'll get the show notes, you know? We have them there, I swear. Honest, Yvonne loves the show notes. There's my pinky girls, that's right. Pinkies up, wear the pinks. Um, you, you wash your, oh yeah, washing your hair after an arm workout is painful. Absolutely painful. But you're, you're like, Anna, you're like, you know, you're like really on it. I'm just, I'm such a weasel when I'm just like, oh, 15 minutes, it's all I can handle. But you know what? I'm, I'm, the place that I'm in is consistency and doing it. And if it's time to turn on the gas, it will be time to turn on the gas, but for right now, showing up is my main thing, and I'm pleased with myself. Um, today, I want to talk a little bit about creating perhaps your own manif manifest your own uh, motivational. Uh, I have lipstick on my teeth. <laughs> Jenny just told me I had lipstick on my teeth. Is that better? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> oh boy. Here's to lipstick on your teeth, you know? At least it's not a big leaf of spinach. I've done that before too. Pretty, pretty unattractive. Or I'll be talking and then a, a chia seed goes flying. Anybody ever do that? <laughs> it's really a, lovely, isn't it? So let's talk a little bit about our own motivational manifesto that we kind of have in our heads. Because what I have found is we either have it or we don't. You know, we have we have a, a manifesto going, uh, we have this thing in our head always going on, don't we? I've had a few people, just once, one or two, and maybe somebody here will um, say it, that, well, I've never had that happen before. I've never had, uh, have anything, you know, speaking to me in my head. I never talk to my head, in my head. I'm gonna tell you right now, do you know what you know what the studies say? Yeah, you do, you're just not <laughs> unconscious of it. We all do it, we all do it. And I wanna tune up that whole conversation. And we talk about the negative loops, we talk about being positive, we talk about all of that. But I want you to hear yourself, hear yourself. I think a really good exercise to do, especially if you, you seem to be stuck and you're not moving out of that, is to, find, is to get a piece of paper and to dump it all out. What are you saying? What are you saying to yourself? What is your negative loop? What are the things that you're saying? Don't just put them off, put them out. When we put the stuff out, we can start to get into the granular necessity of getting rid of the things that no longer serve us or getting rid of the things that never served us. There's a lot of that, right? There's a lot of that. So I want you to hear yourself and it's always on. We always have, our brains are always tuned on. You know, I mean, even as we sleep, they're still, they're still tuned in and turned on. So I want you to get to this place of understanding that when we say we're overwhelmed, it is just totally saying, are you ready for it? Here it comes. There's a lack of focus in your life. Overwhelmed means that you have a lack of focus. You're focusing on too many things. You need to focus on the one thing that's pertinent, the one thing that you're doing now, and the one thing that needs to get done. Says the woman with ADD, and come take a look at my desk. Seriously, it's a crushing mess. But I, but I find myself in this place and starting to go, oh shoot, there's so much to do. Oh, I've gotta do, oh. What I do is I brain dump it all into a plan for the week, and I try to schedule it all out as best I can, and then I go through and I clean up my desk and move things in order and put stuff on my research table so I can pull them back as I need to. Now, I didn't do that before this broadcast. <laughs> I should have because I'm like, no, it's awful. But it, it does. This, this is what overwhelm, overwhelm looks like my desk, right? But when you clean things up and put things in order and just decide, I'm just going to take this one thing, it starts to make things just a little bit more manageable. Because we can go from overwhelmed to manageable when we decide 
we're going to. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> how's that? How do you like that? So you've heard me say before, lots of quotes, what you think about, what, what you focus on, what you think about is your focus and what you focus on, what you focus on expands and what you dwell upon becomes your destiny. I'm sorry, I had them all mixed up. Of course, that's what happens when you've got a desk that looks like mine. The other thing is where your energy flows is where your attention goes. So if you have your energy going on all the things, of course you're gonna feel overwhelmed. No one can do all the things. We can't do them all. You know, we have to manage our, our thoughts so that we can manage our time, so that we can manage what it is that we're doing. It's, it is that simple and it's, and it's that complicated at the same time. But I know this to be true. I know this helps because I know what it feels like to feel like, oh my God, I just don't even know where to start. Start with one thing and put aside the others. So um, the, the, some of the things that we do too, and the, the thoughts that come with this feeling, overwhelming, be, feel, being overwhelmed is a feeling. <gasps> You know, it's, it's like it holds you and it's a feeling of just, I just can't, and then the thoughts come. Well, I'm so overwhelmed, I'm so can't, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so, and then if anybody says, oh, just, just do this one thing, yeah, but, you know, the yeah, buts come to defend <laughs> our fort of crazy overwhelm, which is nuts in, in and of itself, but, you know, when we know that this is on, and when we're knowing that we're saying the wrong things to ourselves, if we can just get a grip and write out what those things are, then we can have an opportunity to start to flip them. Not just in our heads, but on paper. Because when it's on paper, it's more concrete. And can I say this, because I've said it about three million times, and I'll say it three million and one today. If you don't journal, you're missing out on one of the biggest pieces of this puzzle because your journal is gonna give you clues. Your journal is gonna send you messages all the time and you're gonna see the part that's missing from what it is that you're thinking because it'll end up here in the journal. It's so true. I promise you this is the truth and this will absolutely move the needle in your life. We all have some kind of ADD-ness, don't we? I think we do. Because, you know, look at, the, look at the world we're living in right now. We live in a world where it's constant information. Once upon a time when I was growing up, Walter Cronkite came on at six o'clock at night. You know, now the news is on 24 seven. And how many channels do you want it in? Throw in the Spanish channels and we've probably got a hundred channels of news coming at us 24 hours a day. It's overwhelming. Of course you're gonna to react to that. There is only so much that we can handle. So your motivational manifesto is, and I'm saying that this is something that you need to write for yourself, in I am statements, right? You know, the Declaration of Independence is a manifesto. We the people. It's just like, it's very present. It's who we are. It's making declarative statements. And this is what you need to do for yourself. Like, for example, mine. I am going to clean up this desk after I'm done so I can concentrate on what it is that I need to do. <laughs> you see where I'm going with all of this? It's just a matter of taking things out before you add things back in. So that's what we have to, that's how we have to operate. It's, that's the only operating system we can have. Otherwise, we are perpetually overwhelmed. It just happens and it's not you. It's not that you're just so tragically unable to concentrate. It's that there's too much information everywhere, everywhere. I, you know the rabbit holes we go down, right? You, you're thinking about something, then you see something, oh, that looks interesting, and then all of a sudden, the next thing you know, you're on Amazon ordering a book. <laughs> Guilty, <laughs> that's me all the time. Mark says another book, and I'm like, yeah, I'll add it to the stack of what I'm gonna read. But totally, this is how we all operate. So. And Anna says, I end up with, but where do I start? Um, and, and where we start is with one thing, whatever it is that's sticking out to you. And I swear to you, if you will just start with paper, if you will just start, don't even use a pen, use a pencil. If you will just start with your journal, if you will start, 
it will start to happen for you. It will have, start to happen for you. The other thing is that I want you to pay attention to what you're thinking about. I, I want you to take pay attention to what you're thinking about. Um, Dan Sullivan says to, he's, he has a company called Strategic Coach. I used to be in it like way back. And he said, think about your thinking. And when we think about our thinking, we're thinking about specifically, well, what do I want in this life? Huh, how about that, right? What do I want in this life? Um, or or you, specifically, what do I want? Do I want a life that is vibrant? Well, what does vibrancy look like? And then we add the fr why framework into it and keep asking ourselves the why questions until we get to the place of getting to the place of what the heart of the matter is and what our why is and what is so important. That's our hearts, you guys. That's our hearts. When we, it's a cop out to say I'm overwhelmed and then just, you know, take off and go into Netflix or, you know, bury yourself in your phone and get lost in social media for hours. That's a cop out. We, we all have overwhelm, right? We all have overwhelm. And my point to you is that overwhelm doesn't have to take you to the place of taking you down if you make the choice that it doesn't, period. So what do we do? Well, we pay attention to what we're thinking. We think about what our thinking is, but we write that stuff down and do a big old brain dump. From there, we can start manufacturing and pulling out solutions for ourselves on the other side of the page and I am statements for getting ourselves back to the place that we want to go. Yeah, somebody was just saying there that um, use your take back your life journal. That really works out well. Savingdinner.com forward slash journal. Super helpful. But, you know, thank you, Jane. I'm so glad you're finding this helpful. Um, focusing on the present, too, is, is one thing that we, can, that we can always do. Because one of the things that I've noticed, and check this out. See if this is what your thought process is. We get lost in our past thinking about all the failure that we've had rather than extrapolating the experience from it and using that, well, see, I can't do that. That's our proof for why we can't do things. Instead of looking at the present and saying, you know, that was in the past, I've got to focus on today, it's all I've got, and throw some hope into tomorrow. That helps us. That helps us and it helps to put hope, it helps to put optimism, and it helps to put all those good feelings back into your life. When we dwell on the past, you know, except to extrapolate that experience that's going to teach us the lesson so we don't have to go back there again. But when we focus on the past, we focus on the stuff that holds us back. It holds us back, it makes us feel bad. It puts us back into the place of starting that whole negativity loop. And what is the first thing you're going to say after five minutes of living in the past? You ready? You know what it is? I'm so overwhelmed. I can't do this. It's too hard. I just want donuts. I don't want to. I need to do this. Well, maybe after I do this. And then we go into the procrastination. And it just leads from one thing to the other thing to the other thing. And at the end of it, we just said, see, I told you, can't do it. So if we focus on the present and use our now voices, I am is very powerful, it's intentional, and it sets you up for who you are, not just doing something. I am an athlete. That's the thing that I've been telling myself when I get on that bike, competing with 20 and 30 year olds, you know? And, and, and I don't compete like they do. I don't kill myself like they do. I try to stay in the zone. I try to do things. But I also know I'm going to be probably baby myself a little bit more. I'm a little older than they. I could probably be their mother. But, you know, the fact is if I show up, that's athletic, right? If I show up and I do and I say, then I am. I do. I am. I will. I be. It's who I am. I want to identify with that. Not just, I'm losing weight, not just, I feel good, not just that, but I want to identify with who it is that I aspire to be. We should all be doing this because it brings us to the place of doing that then. So what are the actions that are required in order to make you an athlete? Do athletic things. How often do you do athletic things? Well, you know, pull out the little, let's, let's take a look at what Peggy says. 
Part of courage is simple consistency. Part of being an athlete is being consistent. Athletes are not just, they don't show up on the weekends. They show up Monday through Friday <laughs> and on the weekends as well. Who do you want to be? Identify with that. So think about, so when you're, um, when you also have to think about how you're showing up. Are you showing up prepared? Are you showing up ready to go? Are you showing up bringing your best self? So when I come, like for example, you who are gonna to come to the webinar on Thursday, are you gonna come with a pencil and paper and be prepared and ready to take notes? And be prepared and ready to learn something new. Be prepared and ready to take something new and apply it to your life. Not just as like, aha, there it is. Write a little, you know, comment in the webinar chat and then go off and, you know, turn the popcorn on. No. Are we going to apply that? Are we going to be that person? Because this is, this is how we define who we are. We define ourselves and we define ourselves by our identities, not by what we do, by our identities. And I want you to identify with your best possible self. I want you to identify with what it is that you want for yourself as well, because that takes everything up a level and a half, doesn't it? And number three, put it into practice relentlessly, relentlessly. This is how you write your motivational manifesto every single day. I am an athlete, Monday through Friday and on the weekends as well. There you go. It's in, it's in here, in your journal, letting you know what you're about and who you are. And you know, as we say these things to ourselves, we start becoming the things that we want to be. We just can't help it because our reticular activating system is always looking for evidence to support the things we want. Just the same way when you decided you wanted a blue Camry, you suddenly started seeing blue Camrys all over the road. They've always been there, but our brains look for evidence to support the things that we want. And our brains help us out if we know how to manipulate them. And I just gave you the keys right there to the kingdom. When you have control over your brain, over your thoughts, over the things that you think about, over the stuff that you go on in, in, in loops with, that you have control over your life. You have control over your destiny. You have control over more things than you can imagine. You become the woman of your own dreams. What about that? So you put it into practice relentlessly. Relentlessly putting it into practice. I am statements. Using your journal on a daily basis. Checking in with your community, checking in with your body clutter buddy, checking in and being accountable. And as a matter of fact, speaking of accountable, I have a new thing for accountability now. My new thing for accountability is I will check in every single day here and let you know what I did for my athletic endeavor. And today I have done nothing. And you know what I'm going to be doing um, after at three o'clock this afternoon? Oh, well, not at three o'clock because so I have a co coaching client. But at four o'clock this afternoon, I am going to be doing the Beyonce run. That's right. Or at Prince. I'm not sure which one, but I'm going to be doing it on my, on my bike. And you know why I'm telling you this? Because I'm showing up and I'm making myself accountable. And I'm making myself accountable to a whole lot of people. So tomorrow, if you want to ask me, did you do it? I'm going to have to answer you, aren't I? And if I'm honest about who I am and who I'm trying to become, then I'm going to give you an honest answer because accountability brings us to either brings us to our knees or brings us up. You got to do it. You got to do it. Don't allow who you want to be to fall to the wayside because you think it's too hard. Of course it's hard. You know, your effort is, is worth it though. If it's not hard, if everything was easy, I mean, you know what's easy? Netflix, wine, popcorn, games on your phone. That's all easy. What's that done for you? You know, we, how many people have I talked to about pandemic weight? I can't even tell. I've talked to a woman who gained 30 pounds in this pandemic, 30 pounds. Why? Why do you think? Right? But we don't need to go there, do we? We don't need to go there if we define ourselves differently. If we define ourselves by doing things that are different, then we are creating our own motivational manifesto. Your motivation, by the way, is all about emotion. It's about how we feel in the moment. 
And the momentum is about doing. And I'm going to give you the, this is this is so incredibly important. I've told you this before. Motivation plus momentum equals magic. It does. But here's one piece of the puzzle that I hadn't mentioned before. When you let, you, you can pump yourself up with motivation. I'm an athlete. I'm going to do this. Yes, yes, you're the coach. You've seen these guys on the side of a football t game or whatever. You've seen the coaches getting everybody all hyper. You can do that to yourself. And then secondarily, this is the good part about the momentum. All it takes is doing the one thing to get the momentum going. Just the one thing. It's the one domino. For me, it's putting on those stupid spin shoes because I hate them. You know, they're very awkward. You can't walk around in them. They click, click, click everywhere. So what? Put the damn shoes on, Leanne. Let's go. <laughs> That's what I'd say to myself. And you know what? That's all it takes. And after that, it's onto the bike and press go. And there you are. Off to the races. There's the magic. There's the mo mo motivatum. The, the, the momentum. The motivatum. That's momentum and motivation together. Do you like that? Motivatum. There it is right there. So that makes it all work. That makes the whole thing go. And then, do I need to say this? Check in, for heaven's sakes. Check in with yourself. Am I being negative? Because so often negativity is just a bad habit. Have you noticed that? Oh, I can't do it. It's too hard. Where are the donuts? Help me out. Um, I'm overwhelmed. It's too hard. I'm getting on the struggle bus. Uh, maybe next time. But that's all negativity. And if you're not aware of it, get aware of it. This is why that brain dump is so important. Dump it out. Get it out of here, onto there. Use a pencil so your perfectionism doesn't kick out. Look, eraser. And you know what? Suddenly, things will start to change. You become solution-oriented instead of problem oriented. Slack notifications. <sighs> Number five, analyze. Don't get paralyzed. We have to analyze the way that we do things. We do. We have to analyze it and see what the heck is going on. This is how we extrapolate the experience from the emotion because we don't want to get lost in the self-perpetuating pattern. Nobody wants to be the poster child for how not to get things done. Nobody wants to be the poster child for overwhelm or whatever. If we want to move away from that, we take the lesson, look for the lesson, analyze it, unplug from the emotion because the emotion always takes us down. Unplug from the emotion and just be very analytical about the whole thing. What the heck was going on here? You ready? What the heck is going on here? When you do that, you, you can start to get new information. Um, and you get to win the day. You get to win the moment. You get to win all these, have little win here, a win there, a win here, a win there. Those wins add up and start to change the very texture of who you are. And you are the one who gets to tell the story, right? Here's, here's, here's an example. When you shifted things a lot in your head, and let's say you've got a sugar addiction, right? Let's just, let's go with that. And you, what do you do? You go home, you go into the house, you open up the pantry, and there they are. Those Oreos are staring at you. And what do you do? You're saying, boy, those Oreos look good. Or do you say, you know what? Yeah, those Oreos look good, but boy, do they make me feel terrible. I feel bloated, I feel guilty. I feel disgusting when I eat them. I don't like the way that it's all greasy on top of my, um, on top of the roof of my mouth. Yeah, I've eaten an Oreo or two. Um, which one do you want to define you is the whole thing. Which one do you want to define you? Do you want to, to define yourself by going and elaborating on something that it really, at the end of the day, it is you don't want, you're trying to get away from, or do you want to get sucked in and just go ahead and do the same thing that you've always done. This is the motivational manifesto, by the way. This is how you create your own manifo man motivational manifesto by simply deciding what statement is going to be yours. You get to tell that story. You get to tell the story about the Oreos. Do they have power on you, over you, or do you have the ability 
to create your own story about these Oreos. This is why I tell my clients who share a house to go ahead and take stickies and put notes on all the food that, that that's off limits to them that they just they can't handle and that's something that's going to remind them and just tell the family look you can have all the Oreos you want just leave the sticky note on there right this is how, this is how we retrain ourselves so what it is is putting logic over emotion and putting emotion behind the things that you really do want getting yourself worked up for being an athlete getting yourself worked up to strap those shoes on getting yourself worked up for those things and here's the thing your alignment assignment is what you want what you think and what you do all three of those need to line up because that is what creates the momentum that is what creates your own motivation and that is what gets the magic of all this whole thing going they're dependent on each other and, and there's a certain order because you have to start with what it is that you want, right? The deep stuff of what it is that you want, not the little momentary, I want an Oreo, <laughs> you know? Um, and this is what creates that, this is what creates that magic of momentum because your motivation has shifted as your thoughts have changed. So remember that getting started starts with both uh, motivation which begets momentum, and that will always equal magic. Always. I hope you found that helpful. And um, if you heard one thing, I hope you heard get a journal and start journaling. If you heard another thing, I hope you think you start to really get the stuff out of your head and onto paper so you can start dealing with it once and for all. The reason we have loops is because we don't, we just recognize them for the moment and then we move on to the next thing and we go back to the loop. If we dissect it, take it apart, and offer a solution, we'll start to see and make our own magic. It works for me. I know if it works for me, who is, listen, <laughs> it's gonna work for you, because I am the queen of all of this stuff. I really am. And on Thursday, I'm gonna share with you a little bit about my journey out of food addiction and into this place of food freedom. Food freedom is the place we all want to go because then we get to the place of being intuitive eaters and not trapped on the carousel of crazy with all these insane diets. I don't want that for you. That's not a vibrant life. Food freedom is a vibrant life. Get your registration done today. Savingdinner.com forward slash freedom. Love you guys. I appreciate you. Thanks so much for showing up. Peace be with you. Thanks for watching. You can find us on YouTube on the Saving Dinner channel or on the Saving Dinner Facebook page. Check back daily for new episodes, Monday to Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern. If you missed the live show, you can watch the replay. Until next time, pinkies up.